today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. If you equally enjoy fishing inshore and offshore and want a boat that excels in both, we'll be taking a look at the Canyon Bay 24H, a bay boat with an overall length of 23 feet 8 inches, a beam of 8 feet 8 inches, and max horsepower rating of 300. Standout features on the Canyon Bay 24H. A versatile bow layout that includes both a fishing platform and bow seating allows for maximum use of space without sacrificing functionality. A feature common of hybrid style boats, high gunnels give anglers more security when fishing, especially in offshore conditions. If you're looking for simplicity and want to maximize fishability when offshore, a closed transom will help satisfy those needs. For the angler that wants luxury amenities but still wants the ability to chase species both offshore and inshore, we'll be looking at the Boston Whaler 270 Dauntless, a center console boat with an overall length of 27 feet 4 inches, a beam of 9 feet, and max horsepower rating of 450. Standout features on the Boston Whaler 270 Dauntless. A recessed casting platform allows multiple anglers to fish inside the boat instead of on top while still providing extra height. When it comes to keeping your passengers comfortable and content, plush seating is a feature that will be greatly appreciated. A sizable swim door provides a perfect place to get in and out of the water and makes boarding at the dock a breeze. If you desire to take long-range trips with plenty of cargo and passengers or just simply want an extremely stable fishing platform, we'll be taking a look at the Renaissance Prowler 42, a center console with an overall length of 42 feet, a beam of 12 feet 2 inches, and max horsepower rating of 1600. Standout features on the Renaissance Prowler 42. Abundant storage can make long trips much more obtainable by allowing a plethora of supplies and equipment to be stowed underneath the deck. A feature most common on a larger sport fish, an oversized console provides a generous area for electronics and provides additional storage space inside. A wide beam and extensive length contributes to having a spacious cockpit, which accommodates several anglers to fish at the same time. Join our hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles as they conduct walkthroughs and review key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. I'm George Labonte. And I'm Rick Riles. On today's episode, we've got three great boats to look at. From Canyon Bay, the 24H, Boston Whalers 270 Dauntless, and the 42 Renaissance Prowler. We start this week, Rick, with the Canyon Bay 24H. This is a bay boat that leans more towards the open water side of fishing. What I mean by that is this is an open cockpit, closed transom, more like you find on an offshore center console, but has a huge casting deck up on the bow. It's ready to fish shallow and it's ready to fish deeper. Next, we look at the Boston Whaler 270 Dauntless. Now, this boat is unique in the fact that it really does two jobs very well. George, what a versatile boat that is. If you own a 270 Dauntless, you're gonna get invited to a lot of parties. You understand what I'm saying? You can go shade front, shade back, you can go seating all the way around, or you can put in the Pro Angler package and you're ready to go offshore with the best of them. Absolutely, remove a few cushions, put a panel in up on the bow, you've got a casting deck, trolling motor, power pole, straight up fishing boat. George, if you want to talk about square footage and unlimited range, that Renaissance Prowler 42, that thing's huge. I still can't get over the room on that boat, Rick. How many boats have you ever seen with over 4,000 quarts of insulated storage? That you could carry half the fish in the ocean home with you. You could take all your friends and several people you don't know. It's just built for a big mission. It's going way offshore to catch big fish. We've got a lot to cover, Rick. Yeah, let's go jump on that Canyon Bay 24H and look at some of the things that make it an outstanding bay boat. When we return, host George Labonte and Rick Riles take a closer look at a hybrid style boat ready to take on both skinny and open water, the Canyon Bay 24H. This segment brought to you by Fishing Nasara, the best sport fishing in Costa Rica. Fishing Nasara, Costa Rica's best sport fishing. Bite the world's baddest fish with top quality boats, professional tackle, and family friendly English speaking captains. Stay in the authentic nature preserve with wildlife at your doorstep. World class surfing, nature tours, yoga, and fine dining are all at your fingertips in Nosara. Packages start at $700 per person. Don't delay, book today. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles as they take a closer look at the Canyon Bay 24H. 
representing the 17 to 24 foot class in the bay boat category. The Canyon Bay 24H has an overall length of 23 feet 8 inches, a beam of 8 feet 8 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 300. Designed for maximum versatility, she has a draft of 13 inches, a dry weight of 2,500 pounds, a dead rise of 18 degrees, and a fuel capacity of 80 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. George, we're here this morning on the Canyon Bay 24H. H, of course, standing for hybrid. Hybrid, yeah. Let me tell you what, I was a fan from the minute I saw this boat. Me too. Well, you remember that when we first started seeing bay boats, okay, it was like the year of the bay boat, they all came out. The couple years of the bay boat. Oh, it has yeah. been. Well, I got news for you. We're in for a couple of years of the hybrid because they make so much sense. They do, Rick. They absolutely do. And I couldn't agree with you more. I think we're going to see a lot more of these boats, and this is a great example of why. George, we've called this boat a hybrid. One of the things it couldn't be a hybrid without would be a great casting platform. Yeah, and this one's got a phenomenal casting deck. Actually, 65 square feet. This is a really big deck, Rick. I mean, a lot of boats here, you can put two people up there casting, no problem. You can legitimately fish three people up here, no problem. Sure you can, and one of the reasons why you can is right here. It has a live well up here, a great big opening, in case you need to put some baits Sticking there out of a up, cast sure. net, yep. right. But then the smaller opening, if you're sight fishing, you've got a guy spotting fish for you, you want a live bait right there at the ready. Another thing I really like too, this is the deck back here. I mean, I love how they've incorporated the seating into the workspace right here. Just this little drop down to the next level makes stepping on and off easier and gives you an excellent place to sit. Also, we've got two huge insulated boxes up here too. This box is really big. This is a 250 quart size cooler insulated underneath or storage. Another large one, nearly as large in the back right here. I mean, it's got everything you need in a boat like this. I mean, this deck is laid out thoughtfully. I'm standing on locking rod boxes over on this side, which I tell you what, if you don't want to haul all your stuff to the trailer and back every day, exactly. it's a great idea. Everybody wants them now. Let's move to the middle of the boat here. There's a couple of great things I want to talk about on this console right here. Now, Rick, this Canyon Bay boat is what they call semi-custom, okay? There's a lot of custom quality in the boat, but it's a semi-custom boat. How they qualify this as a semi-custom boat is it's offered in a lot of different profiles. This is what they call the deluxe console, and the deluxe console is like a big model. It's got a cooler in the front seat, not enough room inside for a head, but a ton of storage space inside. And it, they also offer the boat with three different tower configurations. You get this hard top, and get a half tower or a full tower. Very customizable boat. You're right, George. And one of the things that really speaks to me is this gunnel height, okay? I love having it right at the right place. I can actually see over the side of the boat in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. You know what? The gunnel height's great. This boat is offshore ready. I mean, this is a boat you can take offshore and go fishing. And you want that gunnel height right there. You want that combing to hit you on the legs. That little bit of security is really nice rather than standing up on a flush deck with your toes on the tow rail. George, I'm a fan of live wells. This boat's too, got buddy. it handy. You know what? You can't have too big of a live well for me. And this one's got a 50 gallon live well right here. And you know how much I like them above the deck? I mean, I like to not have to bend over to get a bait. Really cool big bait well on this boat. 50 gallons is 350 plus pounds. Put it right here for me. It helps keep the boat stable. But you know what? As we work aft, I'm a fan of the good old square transom. I love a closed transom. This one's got it. I mean, it gets you right to the back of the boat here and not looking at a bunch of hardware. It's easy to work around here and you're inside the boat, comfortable, knees up against the back. What about that porta bracket back there? 19 inches of lift. These backrests come out of here. These are rod holders and this boat's got a ton of them. I love bringing a bunch of rods with me fishing. You got plenty of places to put them on the boat. Kevlar hull, carbon fiber decks here. How much weight do you think that takes off the boat? More than the 350 Absolutely. pounds. Absolutely. They said 600 pounds. That's a lot of weight to lose. And also making this hull really, really strong. Rick, hybrid boats are not going anywhere. I'm a huge fan. I see one of my future. That's how much I like them. And this is a great version of them right here. So if you've got an inshore boat and an offshore boat, and you're looking to blend them and get yourself a hybrid, this Canyon Bay 24H has got to be on the list. It definitely is. When we come back, host George Labonte and Rick Riles check out a boat that can fish hard, yet has plenty of luxury amenities, the Boston Whaler 270 Dauntless. This segment brought to you by Real World Sport Fishing, strongest outriggers on the planet. 
50 years ago, Ben and Marie changed boating forever, inventing the trim tab, getting you on plane faster, improving fuel efficiency and performance, balancing loads. Today, more than 1 million systems later worldwide, boats all sizes. Bennett Innovation, durable and dependable trim tabs and hatch lifters, your only source for both hydraulic and electric systems. Bennett Trim Tabs, superior by design, legendary service. Enjoy the ride. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join us as we meet with C.A. Richardson to discuss outboard performance from Evinrude in this week's power segment. When it comes to being a professional angler, engine performance is critical for me. Evinrude E-Tech G2 Outboards are one of the only outboard companies that offer intelligent boat handling. And what that offers is more dynamic power steering and automatic trim. That means even if it's your first time on the water, you can handle your boat like a pro. When you're a shallow water angler like myself and you own an Evinrude E-Tech G2, you understand that the power to weight ratio is superior. That means I can access shallower water yet still have the power to make it from point A to point B ahead of a thunderstorm. Evinrude E-Tech G2, what it means to me is quicker hole shots. It means better fuel economy. It means less maintenance. These are the, the keystone features that keep me on the water 365 days a year. Join our hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles as they step aboard the Boston Whaler 270 Dauntless. Representing the 27 to 30 foot class in the center console category, the Boston Whaler 270 Dauntless has an overall length of 27 feet 4 inches a beam of 9 feet, and a max horsepower rating of 450. Built to fish both inshore and offshore, she has a draft of 17 inches, a dead rise of 18 degrees, a dry weight of 4,800 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 150 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. George, we're here on the 270 Dauntless from Boston Whaler. You grew up in the Northeast. I grew up in Florida. Who didn't dream of owning a Boston Whaler? Hey, where I grew up, everybody wanted to have one. I mean, that was the boat to have. Man, I'm telling you what. Well, let me tell you, they evolved during the years and they went through a lot of changes. They are in the fishing boat business in a big way now. And this Dauntless is a perfect example of that. Absolutely, this is a luxury boat now, Rick. I mean, I was saying earlier, the whaler that I'm sitting on compared to the first 17 foot Montauk I ever got on, <laughs> is like the difference between shooting a bullet and throwing one. This boat is designed to fish off of. It is set up, and it was set up by a professional fisherman to be a fishing boat that you can also cruise in. Rick, you've spent a lot more time on this boat than I have today. Why don't you show me around? George, it starts up here in the bow. When I first saw this, I knew Whaler has gone to great V-holes now. They ride like a champ. And this kind of had that traditional Whaler look to it. They incorporated the best of what was and the best of what is. I noticed the same thing, Rick, that squared off front. I looked at it and said, wow, this looks like the old style, you know? And then see that V hull? They actually just created a nice level fishing platform. Even better, okay, if you don't want to stand on top of the boat, you can lift these cushions off of here and you've got a platform for three guys right here, maybe on a little bit sloppier day that are perfectly comfortable. It's very well thought out. How many 27 foot boats do you see with a remote, windless, and a trolling motor. I think I'm standing on the only one I've ever seen. That's pretty cool. It just shows how much they've brought together in this boat. This Sun Lounge is really cool, but what I really dig about it, look at the space underneath this thing. We've got storage for six rods and everything we could ever take to the Bahamas for a weekend. Let me tell you, the evolution didn't stop here. Let's step back to the console. I got some stuff I want to show you. All right. George, when you get back here, it's all Whaler. You know, Rick, look at the size of this console. I mean, basically a continuation of that big sun lounge with all that storage in here. This console inside is really roomy. I mean, it's big enough to get down in there. There's a head down below. It's a big console, big surface to put your displays on. But look how it doesn't squeeze you into the gunnels when you walk past. This seating is out of a luxury car. It is plush. It's just going to leave you less tired at the end of the day. No wasted space in the back of this console either, George. 30-gallon live well, integrated Yeti to keep your drinks ice cold. 
every inch of it's thought out. All that, Rick, and you've got a sink, you've got tackle storage. I mean, you've got a little bit of something for everybody back here. This is just like we're back in the integrating things for family use on the boat. You're right. It's hardcore fishing. It's hardcore family. Let's step to the back and check it out. Back here is where the magic happens, George. They laid this whole area out to do more than one thing. Absolutely, plenty of room to fish back here. Look at the size of this platform. I mean, you're up here fishing around in the back. If you wanna take a break and sit down and get comfortable though, the seat underneath here is really wide, big enough for three people. But look at the sun right here, it's starting to kill us, right? It's starting to get hot. What do we do about it? Well, we can roll out our sunshade. Yeah, and this is an option on the back of the boat and you can put it up in the front too. You can rig this boat to be a serious offshore fishing boat, put riggers on it. I mean, really get serious about going offshore. If you're fishing inside, we've got a power pole. That trolling motor on the bow and this power pole, you can do a lot of cool stuff with that in the back water up there. She drafts 16 inches, so yeah. you can get as flat as you want to get. But George, switching back to the comfort features for just a second, we've seen transom doors before. Have we ever seen a swim patio? I don't believe I have, Rick. We're gonna see it on this one. If you're looking for a boat it's a heritage boat. You understand what I'm saying? I Been around forever, expression. gonna be around forever. It's high quality and you can do a lot of different things on it. You can make the entire family happy. Boy, the 27 Dauntless is hard to look past. When we return, host George Labonte and Rick Riles check out an extremely stable center console with almost unlimited range, the Renaissance Prowler 42. This segment brought to you by Evan Rood, the outboards that are changing everything. The future of boating is here. Now get all the efficient performance of an Evinrude E-Tech G2 in the new 150, 175, and 200 horsepower. Fuel economy is everything. I was really shocked how fuel efficient it is. Anywhere from 40 to 50 miles further on a tank of fuel. All day on the water. I told my wife, I said, you know, I can't think of the last time I filled up. It's more money in the bank for me. The best in class fuel economy of the Evinrude E-Tech G2 is now available from 150 to 300 horsepower. To learn more, visit Evinrude.com. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles, as they check out the Renaissance Prowler 42. Representing the 31 to 53 foot class in the center console category, the Renaissance Prowler 42 has an overall length of 42 feet, a beam of 12 feet 2 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 1600. Built for venturing way offshore and providing plenty of fishing space, she has a draft of 19 inches, a dead rise of 25 degrees, a dry weight of 9,500 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 500 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. George, we're here on the Renaissance Prowler 42. I'm racking my brain. I'm trying to think of a word to describe it. Unlimited is the only thing that comes to mind. I was going to say overwhelming. Yeah, that's another one. This boat looks like a monohull from every angle except looking straight down the middle of it. And not just a monohull, but a very sexy monohull. Boat. Oh, it does. It's got some great lines, very dissimilar to what we've seen in the old cats of a long time ago. But think about the places these boats are popular. They're very popular in Australia, okay? They're very popular in the Gulf of Mexico. What do they both have in common? A long run to the fish in very rough conditions. That's where this boat shines. Let's take a look at it. It's going to take a long time to break this boat down because we got a whole lot of boat to look yeah, at. Yeah, it's going to take a while. Let's get started right up here on the front. Rick, have a seat, my boy. Repeat to me what you just said a minute ago. I think that really captures where we're sitting right now. George, I've dealt with it my whole life. Size matters. <laughs> okay, let me tell you something. And it's not the fact that it's 42 feet long. People need to understand just how much bigger cats are because of their beam and how they carry their beam forward. Absolutely. I mean, as from a storage aspect, this boat, I've never seen anything like it. Actually, this boat has 5,000 quarts of storage, insulated storage on the boat total. You know, look at the size of this box right here. This is an option on this boat. There's two 900 quart boxes side by side right there. But also look at the lounge seats that they created for two people. There is a ton of room to fish up here also. You notice the rod holders all the way around the deck here. I mean, this boat is made for a bunch of people to fish on and you will not run out of space. You're never gonna be bumping into each other on a four deck this size right here. You're absolutely right, George, but let's work our way back because we got a ton of stuff to look at. Hey, George, 
Yes. Welcome to the command center. Now you tell me this doesn't look like the bridge of the Starship Enterprise. You're absolutely right, Rick. Look at the overall size of this. I mean, this is a 12 foot wide boat. You need a boat that big to put a command center like this in it. It is so big, yet look at all the room to walk down both sides of the boat. Just look at the size of your top. George is 12 feet long by eight feet wide. I mean, everybody gets under here and gets out of the sun. Fantastic. The size inside here, there's a head inside here. You've also got great access to all your systems right here. The wiring is super clean. Everything's really tight. Very impressive. You've got two really super wide seats in the front of this console with a center divider, armrest on both sides, cup holders. Look at this seating right here. You've got three across seating. Convertible, like to stand up and run it. You want to sit down, put your feet up, want to put the armrest down. There's a lot of options how this can be rigged. This one's got a great tackle center, lots of storage underneath here. You've got an insulated drink box, you've got a sink here, fresh and salt water available right here for rigging. You know, it's just a really neat thing. If you like to do a lot of fishing, you're gonna to wanna to have this space back here to store gear. Let's take a look at how big this cockpit is and how fishable it is, too. Holy smokes, look at the room. George, we can play half-court basketball back here. Absolutely. This is a giant cockpit, Rick. We've got two live wells here in each corner, one in each corner here. Doesn't look that big, does it? No, it looks like it. a little pitch well. That's a 65-gallon live well <laughs> on either side. It just <laughs> disappears in the socket. Let me tell you what, there's no fishing that could go on that you can't do back here. Yeah, you've got rod holders all the way around the gunnels and four across there and four across here. I mean, you're set up for all kinds of fishing. Now, look at the dive platform back here. This is a better dive ladder and a better setup for divers getting in and out. I don't think anything beats a cat for a lot of divers. Rick, one more thing. The two small boxes in the cockpit, you've got two additional insulated boxes here. These are 550 quart boxes on both sides of the boat. I mean, that's not small. This is a huge 42 foot boat. This boat only has two engines on it. This boat will go 50 miles an hour with only two engines on it. But you can put quad 300s on here. George, you know, it seems the longer we're around, the more and more cats are taking hold. There's a lot of builders doing it now. You don't want to miss a chance to look at this Renaissance Prowler 42. If you'd like any more information about the boats you saw today or any of the boats featured on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, visit floridasportsman.com. And we'll see you next week on another edition of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew docked and dined at Pirate's Cove Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina. Be sure to join us next week for another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat.